I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos, very pleased now to be joined by Jennifer Elisaev, professor at Johns Hopkins University. Tell me about the work that you're doing with regenerative medicine. Well, regenerative medicine is a field that's working to replace body parts, essentially body parts that might have been lost due to an accident, um, a disease, or simply as we get older, we might need some help rebuilding our tissues. So I've got a, a damaged knee, and I know that you're doing some work with yes. cartilage. So tell me about how that works. So what we're doing with cartilage is we're designing materials that can help guide the repair process better. Uh, use the good repair capacity you have, concentrate it, and fortify it to help rebuild your tissue. Uh, so we just um, uh, finished a clinical trial looking at new materials to help repair uh, cartilage in the knee. So tell me about, um, about how it works. So you build scaffolds and you attract the stem cells, stem cells that you already have in your body. And then how would that help, for example, a soldier? Or is there a difference between soft tissue and cartilage, that kind of thing? Right. So each tissue in your body really needs a scaffold um, that's unique. So we want to create an architecture and an environment that promotes uh, regeneration and growth in that specific tissue. So if we're rebuilding in the cartilage or rebuilding in soft tissue, we need different materials. And how have you, who are some of the people that you've helped, for example? Well, for um, the cartilage repair strategy, we are um, um, looking to help people who have everyday injuries, mm -hmm. uh, trauma, falling down, and mm -hmm. you hurt your cartilage, maybe an athlete who mm -hmm. has um, a torn cartilage, or um, just simply people who have lost cartilage from daily activities. In the case of soft tissue reconstruction, mm -hmm. we're looking at helping women who may have lost tissue to a lumpectomy, or, for example, soldiers who have lost uh, soft tissue, for example, in the face due to traumatic injuries. If you could look sort of five to ten years in the future at your job and what you're doing in regenerative medicine, where do you see it heading? Well, what I'd like to see is a much bigger impact on clinical practice. So we really move away from using metals and plastics and uh, simple Band-Aid type repair strategies repair strategies to actually rebuilding the tissue and having simple off-the-shelf strategies that physicians can easily give their patients. And in terms of the, um, the, the opposition that you face sometimes from government, I know there's a lot of discussion about stem cells. How, would you, how do you deal with that? What's your view on that? Well, right now we're dealing with it by using your own stem cells um, and trying to concentrate those and um, guide them to rebuild. Um, for really extreme cases of injuries, though, you probably do need some exogenous um, stem cells. Um, and I think one part of it is education, that um, the controversial embryonic stem cells are only a really small subset of stem cells that we can mm -hmm. use, and there are many other sources of stem cells in, in your body. So um, there are many steps to, to go to deliver stem cells to people. Jennifer, thanks so much for stopping into the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.